Good morning. <coughs> Let me clear my throat first of all, straight away. I'm still coughing. Over three weeks later. I didn't get yesterday's uh, podcast out in time because um, <coughs> it's a new phone and I just tried to drag the video file across like I always have done and it says no. No. Not enough permissions or no access or something. So um, what with um, sort of yesterday being one of the, my first days back at work, <coughs> I didn't have enough time to sort out what the permissions problem is. <coughs> oh dear me. The germs will get us all in the end, you know. They'll get us all in the end. So, how are you? I hope you're well. We're only a few weeks away from Christmas. Mrs. Angry's birthday is in early December, so uh, all mention of Christmas is forbidden until the angry birthday has passed. But, uh, yeah, not long now. Present buying is well underway. Not on my part, you understand. I don't start buying until 9 o'clock on December 24th. But uh, Mrs. Angry's uh, pretty well squared away now with the presents for the little Angry's and the great Angry's. <coughs> or oh, the grand, what are they? Grandchildren Angry's. Grand Angry's. <laughs> just as angry as ever. Second generation. Just as angry as ever. Still angry after all these years. Anyway, I was telling you yesterday about the implant course and uh, dental and how it was. It's quite a good course. It was um, started off by recommending a camera, but then, uh, funnily enough, I had very, very few pictures of uh, any of the implants that he put in. So, but um, I still recommend the course. Very friendly course. <clears throat> could it be more efficient? Yeah. Could it have been better structured? From an educational point of view, yeah, definitely. Could it have been a bit more spiced up with um, illustrations and diagrams and stuff like that, yeah. Could they have cut down on the content a bit, you know, because I've been, you know, you know what happens when you're in a lecture and you, you know, you're getting towards the end of the lecture and he's running short of time and he starts flicking through slides, you know, and you think, oh, these are slides that I'm meant to be seeing, but he's just going click, 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 no, we'll jump that, no, click, click, we'll jump that. There's a lot of that. But having said that, you know, there was a lot of, um, we asked a lot of questions and I think probably in, in the overall balance, it's better that you get your questions answered than see some <clears throat> esoteric slide on the, uh, you know, tensile strengths of various titanium compounds. So, Implants are, uh, you know, I thought I thought I sort of missed the boat on implants because you know they've been around all my practicing career, and uh, they are, you know, it's a bit like double glazing. You know, the person that makes the most money as a double glazer is the one of the early people into the market, isn't it? But then you realise that almost everybody, everybody, every house would benefit from double glazing that's not a new build and so you know there's a lot of, there's a big tail end there there's a massive tail end and uh, we're also um, the technology has improved to the point now where it's quite easy to put one in you know you really all you need is a is a drill and uh, you know you need to be able to reflect a flap you need to be able to avoid the vital structures reflect a flap use a drill uh, accurately you know in terms of orientation and depth and uh, stick a stick a raw, what is basically a raw plug in with an Allen key, and then uh, sew it all back up again. So it's all uh, it's all easy stuff, really. And the and the cost has come down. You know, there's so many competing implant systems now that uh, you know you don't have to use the Straumann system now. The the incredibly insanely expensive Straumann system. Um, There are lots and lots of systems which are sort of, some are you know, bona fide systems, some are just, uh, 
universal systems where you know they all fit each other then you've got other systems which are uh, clones you know of uh, the uh, OEM system where you're just using something that's trauma compatible or brain mark compatible or something but actually putting the implants in and especially if you're doing something like a uh, upper premolar but almost any tooth that's not a front tooth I would say you can start off with and then see how you get on and then don't try and skip stages because there's three stages you put the implant in leave it for three to six months near a six in the upper jaw near a three in the lower and then you expose it and put a healing cap in which is like a mushroom which which allows the gum to heal in a sort of a uh, what they call the, the correct emergence profile and then um, you unscrew that and uh, take an impression which goes off to the lab and the lab does the bridge work so it's not uh, at all tricky so what's happening is it's like idiots like me are you know getting into the market and we should do really because what well, with 3d scans these cone beam scanners and uh, uh, 3D planning software really all the all the you know the the potential for causing heinous damage by sc screwing through the ID nerve or something is is all gone. You know you know exactly what implant you're putting in and you know pretty much where you're putting in and you can even get a guide which will uh, show you where to where to place it. So. The, um, we're getting uh, quite a lot of phone calls early in the morning and I don't know whether it's because I'm a great proponent for double summer time which means that we shouldn't uh, put the clocks back in the winter we should just have summer time during the winter and then put them forward again in the summer and so that we have an hour extra daylight in the evening all year round and it's I don't know it's just that this is another failure of you know it's a governance failure we're just the people who should be clever enough and far-sighted enough to see that this is a good idea just not in a position to do it and uh, the people who are in a position to change it are, are not uh, at all bothered but um, I had a phone call at uh, about 7.30 this morning and when the uh, answer phone's on it comes through to my phone so when it's a mobile phone number <clears throat> we know it's always someone ringing up they're never emergencies they're usually people who want want to, to try and tell us that they're cancelling an appointment today and because they've been called into work so i don't mind taking the calls because um it's important that somebody tells them that you know with less than 24 hours notice they're going to get charged whether they come in or not which usually focuses their mind and gets them to change their change their decision they usually then say well in that case I'll, I'll, I'll move a few things around and, and come in but um, uh, this is just, just a young guy you know rang up and said I've uh, you know, I was looking on the internet and uh, I need an implant and I saw your practice so I thought I'd give you a ring you know what's that? I mean at 7 30 in the morning I mean who would you try I mean <laughs> would you in your right mind would anyone try any retail outlet at 7.30 in the morning to see if they're open or would you would you try your doctor at 7.30 in the morning to see if he's open you wouldn't would you but if you ring us we are we're on the end of a phone we are and it's not that I want to be I mean I'm on the phone at 7.30 in the morning in case anybody rings me up and said my husband's had a terrible accident on the way to work and he's knocked all his front teeth out and we're on the way over can we meet you at the surgery that's you know like <laughs> not that i want that <laughs> i mean that's why we are we have our service level agreement is to ring back within an hour and to arrange an appointment within sort of 24 hours if necessary if it's an emergency but uh in practice what happens people are they don't ring in the middle of the night but they do tend to ring just quite early in the morning for um, appointment uh, changes and uh, you know and do you do this and just general inquiries so 
I don't know, perhaps it's a thing. Perhaps we are not, perhaps we should be open during daylight hours because it seems that nobody ever rings before dark in the morning, but as soon as the sun comes up, which at this time of year is, you know, six-ish, half six, seven-ish, uh, they're on the phone. So I'm thinking, well, perhaps we should, we should open during daylight hours in the winter. By the time we're open at half eight, you know, uh, sort of one tenth or one one eighth or even less of the daylight, uh, more, more of the daylight's already gone. Anyway, I um, took his number and his name and told him that we'd ring him back at eight thirty when reception opens, and he was quite happy with that. But the main thing is, we've hooked him in, haven't we? We've got a nibble, and we've we've had a quick pull on the line. We've hooked. So now he's waiting for us to ring him back uh, about an implant, whereas uh, if we hadn't rung him back, I should imagine by about 8 o'clock he'll have, he'll have rung another three or four practices. Certainly by 9 he'll have, he'll have rung a practice and got through and got an appointment. So early bird. That's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, apart from the fact they always ring you when you're in the shower, which is a bit of a nuisance. So it looks like uh, what with the fall in the cost of implant systems and the decrease in complexity of uh, both uh, 3D scanning and uh, 3D implant placement software, which we use Blue Sky Bio, incidentally, which is uh, an excellent system um, and completely free and uh, really quite sophisticated, you know, compared because. If you're a manufacturer of an implant system and you decide that you know you, you need some implant planning software, which you do, um, what you're going to do is you're going to have to sort of commission someone to write it, whether it's in America or <coughs> Ukraine or uh, India, and you're going to get a you're going to get a sort of a 3D design program, which is going to be pretty basic. Let's face it, you know, it's going to be pretty going to be pretty dysfunctional whereas if you go with uh, like an open source program that everybody's contributing to then um, you're you're going to get more functionality although you won't be and, and you won't be tied into a particular implant system and this blue sky bio is is capable of working with pretty much every implant system even to the extent that they let you design your own implant if you're using a system that they don't have. Um, and the latest thing they're doing, which they're beta testing, is um, some sort of Invisalign smile line uh, alternative, where with um, Invisalign, what happens is you take a mold of the patient's teeth and it's scanned, and um, they they then they then put it on a system and, and move the teeth and then they use a computer process called tweening which actually comes from cartoons um, to create the, um, the the sort of the in-between stages in between the beginning and the end uh, positions of the teeth and tweening was developed because um, cartoonists don't want to draw every single frame of a cartoon and in fact it would look pretty jerky if they did when you're considering that they need they need about 25 drawings for every second so what they'll do is they'll like do two drawings a, a second apart and then the computer will then fill in 24 inter interstices interstitial drawings so it will just so so if something's moved um, you know, let's say 25 centimetres, it'll move in each one, it'll move it a centimetre. And it's got the intelligence to understand the shapes, and the shapes are represented by uh, nodes. Um, and the, um, so basically, it, it can basically, it knows what the shapes are and it just contorts and deforms the shapes. Anyway, we don't need to get into the technicalities, but the point is, that, that same technology that was used for cartoons is, is used for um, teeth. So what happens is you say, like, this is the lower left three where it started, this is where we want it, and it will, it will gradually, it'll move the lower left three over sort of eight or ten interstitial frames to, um, and then 
can give you eight or ten interstitial uh, moulds. Um, in the case of uh, Blue Sky Bio, the idea is you then print these on a, a 3D printer. So the bit with Invisalign or uh, Smile Line, where you take the mould and then send it off to the lab and they send you back this 3D uh, 3D animation of the tooth movement, which wows the patient so much that they decide to have their teeth moved. Um, and then, and then they uh, send you these uh, eight or ten trays and everything, and um, and charge you like thousands of pounds. I mean, literally thousands of pounds for this. Uh, now you can just do it yourself. You can just literally. I think you would obviously you would need to scan the patient's um, teeth, either in their mouth or uh, take a mould more 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 likely and scan the impression. Or scan or pour it into plaster and scan the positive plaster cast um, and that I think that's the only sort of thing that's really missing from a technological leap forward point of view and that is a cheap and easy scanner um, I think when when uh, we can get scanners that will scan plaster casts accurately quickly and cheaply then I think that we'll have a massive jump forward in uh, uh, sort of orthodontics that can be done in in the surgery. <clears throat> At the moment, scanners are they're not cheap and they're not brilliant. They're they're okay, you know. But you know, if you're if you're if you've got a upright lower seven and you're trying to scan the distal of it, this this scanner thing is not small. You know, I mean, it makes an intraoral camera look small. This these scanners, they are about like two or three centimeters cubed. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get those in a patient's mouth, and uh, they had one at Dental Scanner, and uh, they had, and also had a laser unit. They've got so they've got everything, you know, because they're like being implantologists and doing quite a decent turnover. I suppose they can afford to invest in all this stuff, um, but they're like. Now, you know a lot of gadgets you know that dentists get and end up in a cupboard we get sold on stuff don't we um, and lasers are you know they keep making a comeback and I think I haven't heard them making a comeback for a while now so I think we finally realized that lasers are not all that cracked up to be electro surgery units you know perhaps if you're a periodontist might use one but in general practice they're not all they're cracked up to be um, Ceric machines, if you're in a lab, then you know you might want a Ceric machine or if you're doing a ton of ground and bridge work. But they're not all they're cracked up to be because you know they're very you then gotta start learning how to fire them, how to stain them, how to glaze them and stuff like that. So you know you don't really want to be <clears throat> spending a lot of money on a Ceric machine. Uh, what else is consigned to the dustbin of history? We did have a thing that uh, detected decay. That was quite good. Uh, I think Cavo made it, and you put it on the tooth, and it went wow, 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 and then when it found decay, it went wee. So uh, that was good for, and that was very reliable and very good. It relied on um, some sort of uh, light uh, stimulus, when, and it detected the change in the frequency of the returned light. <coughs> if you're thinking, if you find one of those and you're thinking of getting those, then I would recommend that because um, certainly um, with with uh, new patients or even existing patients, it's it's something that you can use while you're doing your checkup, which is and you would use it all the time because you use it for every checkup, and um, it's very tangible in that the, you know it's got this oral signal that goes mad when it touches any decay. And the patients know straight away. They're like, "Oh, what's that? What, what, that alarm went off. Is that? What, what happened? Why did that alarm go off?" And you say, "Yeah, it's found a, it's found a, an occlusal. It's no good for um, MOs or DOs, but it will find, you know, the sort of occlusals, the occult occlusals that you look at and on the X-ray, and you're not sure whether they're there, or um, and you look at the tooth and you prob prod it, prod it, prod it, prob it, prod it, and." Uh, 
and and you know and you think oh you know this tooth this tooth hasn't been filled for about 20 30 years and why you know am i the sort of dentist that's going to go in and fill every black dot you know but when this thing goes mad you know that there is something there and it is worth going in you know and the patient agrees with you in fact they insist on it um, but that, the only problem with that is it doesn't work on composites, so you know it, it gets a funny return off a composite. So um, you know, but, but you wouldn't want to use it on a tooth that's got a composite occlusal in it anyway. But just to let you know that it it will go mad on a composite, so as well. So best to try and avoid confusing the patient. Uh, what else, <coughs> gadget-wise, have I had intraosseous bone injections, Stabident. Is it Stabident? Yeah, Stabilock is the pin. Stabident, I think, is the is the intraosseous bone injection, and that's that is really really very good. Um, what you do is you give the patient a, like a buckle, a small buckle injection, or a small intrapapillary injection, and then you get out uh, this thing, which is a I don't know what the name is for. It's like a trephine, but basically it's a small, very small needle shaped piece of steel that's not hollow it's it's solid and then very slowly and and gently but when with a fair bit of water you just gently push it into the papilla poking it down so it's going to go into the um trabeculated bone you know it has to go into a cat's you have to go through the cortical plate but if you sort of push it and it goes into the cortical plate and then after a couple of seconds it goes it goes you know and you're through then you know that you're inside the mandible or you're inside the maxilla and then you then just use your standard local, but again with a very very short stubby needle that matches the uh, the hole that you've just drilled, and you squirt I don't know possibly 2.2 mils, a quarter of a cartridge or something. Uh, bearing in mind that you're putting it directly into the bone, so it's going to go numb straight away, which it does. It literally, it goes stone cold numb straight away. Um, now when would you use that? I mean you'd use that in patients who s said that they were experiencing problems going numb. Um, you can use it on teeth which are uh, hypersensitive. You can use it on teeth where you've done an ID block and it hasn't worked. Uh, although that would be a bit, you know, I mean probably that would be overkill because you should have done it in the first place. Um, you can use it on um, you can use it when you're running late and the patient you know you need to take out a lower right six or something and uh, and you can literally just pull the, pull the injection out <laughs> prod it a bit get the forceps on it and take it out like within within 60 seconds so uh, and also it uh, cuts down on the post-operative bleeding because obviously that with some uh, adrenaline directly in the uh, jaw there's there's very little post-operative bleeding. Uh, so that's something that I would, again, I would recommend. So that the bleepy thing, the interosseous, um, and uh, you know, I mean, that's something like an intraoral camera, which everybody should have anyway, an intraoral camera. So there you go. That is it. My roundup of first uh, crap you shouldn't expensive, actually, basically crap you shouldn't buy. A much less expensive useful gizmos that actually do work so I'll, um, I'm hoping to get these these videos up today but I'm still again I'm very busy today we've got we're having getting about four new patients a day at the moment which is great we uh, Oh, we went through a couple of weeks uh, a month ago where we were dead. We had absolutely nobody booked in at all, and I was just about to kill myself. And now all of a sudden we're just back to being rushed off our feet again. So, so the moral of the story is don't uh, don't kill yourself. Uh, it's almost always not necessary. Lovely. Yeah, so I don't know what I'm doing today, but uh, it's always fun, isn't it? And I'm very early. Normally I don't screech in until 8.45. I'm not starting until 9.15 today, and it's 8.20. So I'm actually in before the staff today. So I want to just 
I just want to do it because and it's, it's not because I want to sort of give them the impression that if they don't come into work on time I might that might just be there that's not what it is at all it's uh, it's some other reason right okay all right nice to talk to you talk to you tomorrow bye